Should I say so, my belief again? <laughs> let's 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 get right in. Let's get right into it here. Um, I'm going to share a screen and see what we can do with this here. <clears throat> There we go. All right. Um, what is the real meaning of sacrifice? Although in truth, the term sacrifice is altogether meaningless, it does have meaning in the world. Like all things in the world, it, meaning is temporary and will ultimately fade into nothingness from which it came when there is no more use for it. Now, its real meaning is a lesson. Like all lessons, it is an illusion, for in reality, there is nothing to learn. Yet this illusion must be replaced by a corrective device, another illusion that replaces the first, so both can finally, be, finally disappear. The first illusion, which must be displaced before another thought system can take hold, is that it is a sacrifice to give up the things of this world. What could this be but an illusion, since this world itself is nothing more than that, an illusion? Mm -hmm. So the first illusion, which must be displaced before another thought system can take hold, is that it is a sacrifice to give up the things of this world. Sacrifice we see that as a sacrifice in this world to and give it up the, of that the, something is being suffered in in the terms of this world and in terms of the way that the ego deals with this world yes there is something being given up and it is that that first illusion that we must get past before we can give up the illusion of the world itself Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anybody else have any thoughts about that? All right. Well, if this world is an illusion. Yes. Then how come I'm feeling so sweaty hot today on my walk? Because your body is experiencing that. And the body is as much a part of this illusion as everything else. So I just tell my mind, you're all a fake and you're not really feeling that. And you, can, you can, but that sounds like that's like an attack. Oh. But you, you, you can't, as, as we will discover as we get through into this, into this section any further, you can't give up just part of the illusion. Okay. Sacrifice must be complete until it is understood to be meaningless. All right. So let's go on to the second paragraph. Anybody else want to read? I could. Please do. Okay. Paragraph number two under what is the real meaning of sacrifice. It takes great learning both to realize and to accept the fact that the world has nothing to give. What can the sacrifice of nothing mean? It cannot mean that you have less because of it. There is no sacrifice in the world's terms that does not involve the body. Think a while about what the world calls sacrifice. Power, fame, money, physical pleasure. Who is the hero to whom all these things belong? Could they mean anything except to a body? Yet a body cannot evaluate. By seeking after such things, the mind associates itself with the body, obscuring its identity and losing sight of what it really is. 
So the idea of sacrifice, which is in and of itself wholly a purview of the body, that idea of sacrifice has, has a double layered meaning. First, there is the sacrifice that, the, that, the, that we have to give up the body, give up the world, and then the idea of the sacrifice that we must give up the idea that the world has anything to give up. There is no sacrifice in the world's terms that does not involve the body. Think a while about what the world calls sacrifice. Everything where the idea of sacrifice comes is the idea of having to do having something to do with the body with the illusion of the world. And by giving up the idea that the or by by accepting the idea that the world is the illusion there is nothing in the illusion to give up. There is no sacrifice in the world's terms that does not involve the body. Mm. I am not a body. I am free. I am as God created me. Mm. And by accepting that idea, that truth, and understanding that the only thing that holds me to the idea of the body is the idea that the body is somehow real and that giving up the body is in theory death that whole idea of sacrificing the body is what holds the body the reality of the body in our mind power fame money physical pleasure who is the hero to whom all these things belong well, the hero is the body. Yet a body cannot evaluate. It has no, it has no ability in and of itself to judge it, it itself in reality because it is not in reality itself. By seeking after such things, the mind associates itself with the body, obscuring its identity and losing sight of what it really is. The mind associates itself with the body, obscuring its identity. We accept the, in our mind the idea that the body is real, and therefore we accept in our mind the idea that our true identity is not real. And until we are willing to sacrifice the idea of sacrifice, until we are willing to, to sacrifice the idea that there is anything to give up in the body, we will continue to create that, that, that lowercase our reality of what the body is and not what the body, what, what, what we are in our identity, capital I identity as God created us. Anybody else have any thoughts about that? Danny? Hi, Judy. I, I have a, a thought. Morning. Uh, Hello. Danny. Hi, Danny. Hello. Hi, hi everyone. Hi. Um, one thing that's Sweet happen, Virginia. Uh, the, the course is a course in mind training. We are completely, uh, uh, un, well, at least my mind is very, very untrained. Um, and I, I, I believe in many, many things, including this world and the body and my life and all of kind of things. I mean, million of concepts, but what is helpful to, um, to, to point to this, uh, what the course is trying to say, <coughs> actually the author of the course itself uh, is an example. And it appeared to Helen Schuchman, uh, who uh, completely out of the blue, and this uh, created a wave of uh, joining 
of many, many people over the last more than 40 years, and we are part of this wave. And this is just one example because Jesus uh, is, is, is simply not a body. I mean, he is infinite. He appears for, for all of us, you know, many of us in different forms. And so I think it, it has to do with the Course in Miracles because what is a miracle is a change of perception. And what the Course is trying to teach us in this um, book is how we can train our mind again and again and again. And, and that's, it's helpful. And that, that's, that's what I wanted to share. Thank you. You're so the, oh, oh yeah. I was going to say you're right. muted. Okay. I just yeah, I just realized. Uh, so we are we are here to learn a course that was given to us by a non-body. We are here learning this course that seems to have a physical presence in this world but in fact was given to us by a non-physical presence. And by accepting that truth that we are, that the source of, accepting the truth of the source of, that, of this course is one small step closer to the truth of our own true identity. Because we have accepted this this book, this this curriculum into our lives with the idea that where it comes from has nothing to do with the body whatsoever. I am here to ex to to take this curriculum and to study it and to understand the truth of it. And by doing that, I am sacrificing the idea that the physical world, the world that I seem to be existing in, is maybe a little less, little less true. It is a little less the idea of being who I am and a little bit, I am, I'm here only to be only to be accepting of the idea that the curriculum is not of the body. We are not here to heal the body. I am here to heal my mind's misconception of what it really thinks it is. Anybody else have any thoughts on that? Mm. All right, let's go on to the next paragraph. Paragraph three, anybody want to read? Uh, is this Please, number, Carolyn, go ahead. Is this number three? Number three. Once this confusion has occurred, it becomes impossible for the mind to understand that all the pleasures of the world are nothing, but what a sacrifice. And it is sacrifice indeed, all, these, all this entails. Now has the mind condemned itself to seek without finding, to be forever dissatisfied and discontented, to know not what it really wants to find. Who can escape this self-condemnation? Only through God's word could this be possible. For self-condemnation is a decision about identity, and no one doubts what he believes he is. He can doubt all things, but never this. And I confess, this really confuses me. Okay. Start with Starting with what?
Well, starting with the first sentence, it's impossible for the mind to understand that all the pleasures of the world are nothing. It is impossible for the mind that believes in this world to be to believe that the pleasures of this world are nothing. Okay, because we adding, have already... that little, adding that phrase helps. It, say it again, it becomes impossible for the mind to understand, which believes that the, the world is real, to believe it is impossible to understand that the pleasures of the world are nothing. It, because if, the wor if, if we believe the world is real, then the pleasures of the world are real. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> mind has condemned itself to seek without finding. It wants, it wants the pleasures of the world. It wants the reality, quote unquote, of this world to be real. And the only way it can do that is to seek without finding the truth. To be forever dissatisfied and discontented, to know not what it really wants to find. The mind wants to find the truth. <coughs> Excuse me. But there are two truths. There's a lowercase t, which is the truth of who we think we are here in this in this illusion, and there's the truth capital T, which is the truth of uh, as as I am as God created me. And if the mind wants to continue to believe in and accept and possess the uh, the pleasures of this world, then there's no way that that mind is going to turn it against that and believe what God created instead. So we are caught, we're, we're caught, that, that's where the double sacrifice comes in. First of all, we have to sacrifice the idea that the pleasures of this, of this world are nothing. Or I should say we should accept the idea the pleasures of the world are nothing. This, we must sacrifice the idea that the pleasures are real. And then we have to sacrifice the idea that once we have accepted the idea that the pleasures of the world are not real, then we have to sacrifice the idea that the world itself is someplace where God's will wants us to be. Because true happiness as god it's god will wants us to be true happiness cannot be in a place where there is death and destruction and and finiteness sickness horror war all those things where we which we see here and which we can maybe hope to ignore, but ignoring is not the same thing as accepting is not true. In fact, ignoring something gives it even more reality. Anybody else have any thoughts about that? Hi, Linda. Hi. Hi. I see you stuck in there. Oh. Yes, Danny. I, I find this very helpful paragraph in um, maybe if you can put it back on the screen also for a moment. Sure. Um, okay. Think, um, it is for me, it's loaded with meaning because I actually live in this. I, I truly believe in what it is saying here, and I live in it, but I didn't pass the next stage because uh, there ha has to be, like one of the lessons in the course is that um, we, uh, I don't remember the exact words, but one of the first beginning lessons is that uh, the world has no meaning. I gave, uh, all the meaning to the world that it has for me, I gave it that meaning. And, and yet, uh, 
afterwards, the, there is one of the lessons that says God did not create a meaningless world. Uh, so there is another world that is the real world, the infinite world. And Baraka, you, you experienced this. That's how you started this program. You had this dream and you didn't want to come back, you know. Mm -hmm. And then, and and this is why we are here. It's it's a miracle, just like the course of miracles. Anyway, uh, it is very very helpful for me because I am in between the worlds right now. I I all my life from age fourteen, I've been going through these waves of depression, and that are so 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 difficult. And everything, every few months or weeks, everything is destroyed in my world. Like I build things, uh, I I build dreams, just like it says here, you know, the world. So I still, I think I'm still trying to find some pleasure in this world. I'm trying to find uh, the approval of other people. I'm trying to still be uh, accepted by society but that is not what i'm supposed to do i need to let go of this so i think that the reality that i am experiencing and i think everyone is experiencing their own perfect reality so um and the last thing i want to say that i i have been going to this nursing home uh, many like many times, like maybe four four times a week or so. And I saw what I'm seeing there, that the people that are there, like there is one uh, particular person uh, who moves his wheelchair and bumps into people. And he, he's, he, he wants to get out of there. And... Uh, his wife is coming every day to the nursing home to give him uh, some healthy food like carrots and, uh, you know, uh, and she spends hours with him. And I had a conversation with her and she shared with me that he, he got a stroke uh, a few years ago and it was still okay. And then he got Alzheimer uh, when COVID-19 started. And then it started going down and he had to go to a nursing home. Uh, what is happening, he is giving up the world. He's very, he still wants to hold on to the world. I see myself in him. I'm, I'm very grateful for, for meeting him. And sometimes I, I communicate to him and he understands me. He understands me and he can even respond in some way, but I don't see myself as different than, than him because I'm just doing the same thing in another form, you know, and uh, I feel that like I was very scared to come to this meeting because I am so isolated lately. I don't meet people, uh, you know, I feel this immense shame you know, or for being depressed and so on. I know it's illogical, but this is the mistake, you know, that that I'm do I'm not going to the next stage, which is just relax, just know there is only love. God voice is speaking to me all through the day. There is nothing but you know this voice and what is silent it is I don't hear it because of the ego's voice. So anyway, I came to that meeting and I'm very happy. Right now, I feel very blessed. And thank you for, for allowing me to express myself. I'm and confused. if I could say something, Danny, I'm so glad you're here. I heard yours was the very first voice I heard when I got on. And I, I, I think we've missed you the last couple of weeks. I can't tell you how blessed I feel that you are here. I love your presence. Of course, I love each and every one of you guys and love and appreciate the gift that this is to me. 
and Danny, thank you for what you just said and for being here and keep coming back. Know that this is such a safe place that you are just loved beyond measure. Mary, thank you so much. Your, your words soothe, soothe me because I do feel safe. You know, I, I do feel safe. I feel that we are all insane. The world is a, 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 an asylum. <laughs> <laughs> and with our psychiatrist, right? With Jesus. Absolutely. And the Holy Spirit. So we are together, and that that is a community which is unity and communication, and it's so beautiful. And I I know that right now I feel very, very safe because I tell you uh, this this is beyond words for me, the meaning of coming here. Thank you so much, Mary. Mm. Thank you. Thank Dan. you both very much. The idea that we have a purpose here in this room is no closer to the truth than the purpose we seem to think we have in the world, except for one difference. Here we are aware of the sacrifice. Here we reinforce the idea that we that there is the idea of a sacrifice, that we are somehow duty bound to maintain that idea of owing this world something so that we can keep perpetuating this existence here. Here, we know there is, there is something about that that is not right. We, we have come to accept the idea that even, even if we are not willing to give up the idea of this world, even in a, a little bit, we are all here because of the idea that something else is going on here. Something, something else, else exists. S something Barack, else what exists. occurred to me was when, when I make jello, it's liquid. Yes. I don't make jello, it's gelatin horse hooves, but um, <laughs> anyway, oh. anyway <laughs> ingredients, in, ingredients were notwithstanding. <laughs> I'm sorry, I lost my thought, but good morning all. It is so important. Thank you, Danny, for bringing up the topic. We are present. We are present. And I'm sure all of us are thinking like, what the fuck is going on? We know there are weird things happening. We know there's that stuff going on in the world. I turn my attention to grace, to gratitude, to love, because I want to get out of this jello mix before it sets. Well, here, here's the good news. The thing that you're trying to get out of doesn't exist. Yes. Oh, is it yellow? No, <laughs> it doesn't exist. It really doesn't. Gelatinous host, host moves or not. Brother. Thank you, right. brother. We, we are here yeah. only due to our beliefs. Helpful. And, and due to our, what we were thinking in our mind, and the mind is the easiest thing to change. In fact, it's the only thing to change. It's the only thing we can change. There is, there is on, a, on a scale of one to one million, the mind is the only thing on that scale. So I am going to change the mind in any degree that I feel I am able to do, or I'm willing to, willing to do, not able, willing to do. I will change my mind as my willingness grows. I will my will to God's will. Say that again, please. I will my will to God's will. In punto. In punto. <laughs> when we get to those pearly gates, there will be a I little think I cluster saw your of us. Up, Virginia. Virginia was going to. <laughs> What you got, Virginia? Oh, uh, I was going to say it, it. It it is so simple. We're getting we're getting really mixed up, 
in, in thinking that what we see is finite. It isn't, it's, it's of our imagination. It's all, it's all an illusion. And to get, there is a world, it, the Course says, beyond this world that we really want. And the only way to get to that world is to realize that this world does not exist. Mm -hmm. This body does not exist. It's really, really simple. There are no pearly gates. There is no death. Right. There's nothing to escape from. We're already been declared innocent, not guilty. The, the Course calls it, we just make mistakes and mistakes can be corrected. And the only way you can correct mistakes is in the mind. And where do you go to correct the mistakes? You go within because that's where the kingdom of God is. It's our spiritual being, which some people call our higher self. And so if we, if we deal with, if we go within and seek who God is, because God is, what is God? God is spirit. What are we? Energy beings. And we often, we often get tangled up, but this world does have a purpose. The purpose of this world is for us to learn that. And the purpose of the body is we is given to us so we can learn this lesson, so that we can know who we are, so we don't have to be depressed, so we don't have to live in fear, so we don't have to have people uh, wanting to hug us all the time to make us feel good, so that, you know, you, you can go on and on. Maybe I'm it's saying <laughs> exactly. It's just a matter of how much proof do I need? That's right. How, how, what, what, and why do I need proof? Well, the proof is in the ego mind because the ego mind has eyes and ears and a taste bud and smelling and touch that it finds its proof in its own reality in those ways. But all those, all those things, all those things of the ego mind are all part of the mechanism that the ego wants to prove its own existence. Not prove God's existence, but to prove its own existence as opposed to God. Virginia, I really appreciated what you said, and, and Baraka too, but I, I, I felt that. I, it just went straight to my heart. <laughs> Download, Ooh, upload, yep, mm -hmm. <laughs> upload. Well, we've been uh, subconsciously programmed, and uh, we don't even realize that realize that that is within us, and that's what we have to get out. And the only way to get out is to go within. Reboot. Right, and, and listen to the voice within. within. And that voice within, the, the Course calls the Holy Spirit. And right. that's the only way, Please. and it takes trust in that voice to get us out of this predicament. <sighs> yes. I, let's, let's go on to the next paragraph, which I oh think- Oh my, there's more. Goes, oh my God, oh, this, is, this is a rather lengthy, chapter as a matter of fact okay who wants to read cha uh, paragraph number four i will god's teachers right. yes please god's teachers can have no regret on giving up the pleasures of the world is it a sacrifice to give up pain does an adult resent the giving up of children's toys does one whose vision has already glimpsed the face of Christ look back with longing Ooh, on a slaughterhouse? No one who has escaped the world and all its ills looks back on it with condemnation. Yet he must oh, read, read, that, read that sentence again, please. I know, it's confusing. Does an adult resent the giving up of children's toys? 
does one whose vision has already glimpsed the face of Christ look back with longing on a slaughterhouse? Woo. No one has escaped the world and all its ills looks back on it with condemnation. Uh -huh. I don't get it. It's Judy, it's no one who has escaped the world and all its ills. Oh. Looks back on it with condemnation. Thank you. Because yeah. Yeah, he must rejoice that he is free of all the sacrifice its values would demand of him. To them, he sacrifices all his peace. To them, he sacrifices all his freedom. And to possess them, must he sacrifice his hope, heaven, and remembrance of his father's love, who in his same mind chooses nothing as a substitute for everything. Yeah, I did. Well, at some, at some point, I did. Yeah. You know, and yeah, I and did. and now I now I now I get to do the easiest thing in the entire world: choose again. Yeah, easy, easy, sneezy. Mm -hmm. Anybody else have any thoughts on that paragraph? Anybody, please. I think it's that last sentence that presents a question or so. Who in his sane mind chooses nothing as a substitute for everything? Nothing is, illusion is nothing. Okay, okay, I see. The world is nothing. So who in his sane mind chooses illusion as a substitute for everything? It, it is a slaughterhouse in the fact that it, there's been a lot of pain and suffering. And I just, I, I hate the fact that right in my, my own little hometown, the biggest business right now is a slaughterhouse. And um, wow. we know that like, I, like there's a lot of suffering and I've suffered a lot, but to know that <clears throat> the physical body isn't real. It's our mind that thinks it's real. And, um, and the knowing that we are eternal Tao, <laughs> as Vicky's trying to, to show us again, too. Like, that spirit is always there because that is what we always and forever will be. Right, and, and in that spirit, there is no pain. There is no slaughter. There is no loss. There is no death. There is no harm. But we keep looking back at it and seeing yeah. the slaughterhouse. Yeah. And, and, and the, the, there's, there it is. Lo who looks back? <laughs> We no. do all the time, unfortunately, and we got to stop yes. it. <laughs> exactly. When it's when it is, it's it's the the idea of. Just it is the idea of not looking back, not looking forward, but being right here, right now, stacking up the now right on top of each on top of itself, and in the now there is no slaughterhouse. There is no idea of a slaughterhouse. There is no idea of the pain of a slaughterhouse, which then and when constantly put us in. I am constantly reminding myself of how terrible it was an hour ago or how fearful an hour from now will be. I'm constantly putting myself in that position until I bring myself back to the idea of Right here, right now, nothing can harm right now. I am here because this is where the truth of me lies. And if I have trouble holding myself here, I have the voice for God, the Holy Spirit to turn to and allow myself to stack, my, stack myself back up on 
vertically where no harm can come. Well, thank you, everybody. Thanks for your discussion and thank you for your words, Baraka, too. Oh, I'm, 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 I'm just listening. I'm just Brenda, listening. Brenda, you brought, you brought to mind something, Brenda, with something you said. Okay, oh, okay. so some, some of you guys might remember like Sonny and Cher, you know, this couple that sang together and they were on TV and Cher was, she was kind of snappy, you know, and, um, and she sometimes would say to Sonny, her husband, she'd say this, snap out of it. <laughs> and I sometimes think of that, like when I start this, you know, thought and, and this attachment to some kind of negative thing, you know, I just sometimes in my mind hear Cher saying, snap out of it. You know, it kind of oh, helps. Perfect Cher. Thanks, Sister Mary. <laughs> yes, exactly. All right. Carrying on here. Uh, paragraph number Five. Anybody? Any takers? I like this one, Baraka. I'd love to do it. If Please it's Mary. Do. Okay. Yes, Mary. Now, what is the real meaning of sacrifice? It is the uh -huh. cost. It is the cost of believing in illusions. It is the price that must be paid for the denial of truth. There is no pleasure of the world that does not demand this. For otherwise the pleasure would be seen as pain. And no one asks for pain if he recognizes it. It is the idea of sacrifice that makes him blind. He does not see what he is asking for. And so he seeks it in a thousand ways and in a thousand places, each time believing it is there and each time disappointed in the end. Seek but do not find remains this world's stern decree and no one who pursues the world's goals can do otherwise. And I remember Marianne Williamson so often saying that this is the ego's mantra, seek but do not find. So um, let's, let's go to the idea of the storefront for a moment. Uh, here's a storefront. There must be a better way. And I stand in the doorway of the storefront waiting for a client. Now, what am I, what am I waiting for? Am I waiting for the client to come and express their need to me? Or am I waiting for the client to come teach me what I am asking to learn? <laughs> and by allowing the client to come to me and teach me what I am asking to learn, I am no longer seeking to not find. I'm seeking to find. The, my whole existence in this world is to find truth not that the truth is to be found in this world but the idea of sacrifice giving up the idea of sacrifice is the idea of being able to open myself to the idea of finding truth seek but do not find limits my idea of giving up sacrifice if I seek but do not find, I will constantly sacrifice the idea of what the truth is. But by being able to open myself up to whatever my client will teach me, whatever I will be made aware of, whatever thought I, whatever thought I see I can forgive my brother for, and understand that the truth of them is not the problem they're coming here to solve, there must be a better way, but is indeed the truth of what they are bringing me to see about myself. Because I have asked that client to come and teach me the lesson of who I am as, as God created me by being the reflection 
of something which seems to be other than what God has created. But acknowledging the fact that my, my, my client, my, my sibling in Christ is there to teach me the truth of me by reflecting to me that which I need to learn. And I take responsibility for that myself. I sacrifice the idea of being a, I'm trying to find the right words here. I'm, I'm sacrificing the idea that there is a lesson to be learned outside of myself. And in fact, I am here to learn that lesson. No one else is here to teach me, but myself and my brother reflecting that lesson to me. So I seek to find, which the ego does not want me to do. I seek to find. No one who pursues the world's goals can do otherwise. Seek, but do not find. Anybody else have any thoughts about that? Linda? Hmm. It's kind of, I, I don't know if I totally grasp this concept. And in some ways I feel like I do, in some ways I feel like I don't. I, I see the challenge for me um, is, while I'm inhabiting this body, all my experiences are based through this body. And I can grasp the concept that, yeah, it's not real, it's all illusion, but at the same time, I cling to that experience of it feeling real and it feeling like, like for me, I experience a lot of pain. Now, pain is resistance to the truth. And I can tell myself that and I can, you know, accept it, but I still experience the pain. I still experience the resistance. I still experience what I experience through this body. Um, so like, like I feel, I just feel confused about it. I feel <clears throat> like it's a, it's the, it's the part that God has to take over in order to let go of this world completely. And perhaps that's why we decided we will die to leave the body, to go back to, to where we came from. Um, but I don't know. And, that, and, and I'm okay with not knowing. <laughs> because well, the, the idea that the, the, the pain is something I have to give up. <clears throat> I have to move past pain. I, I need to find a way to go around and, and around it or whatever. Mm -hmm. Somehow I must find a way to avoid pain. Um, I must, I must sacrifice the idea of pain. Yeah. Those are all pointing towards how, um, uh, towards my relationship to this illusion. I am here to not, not to give up the idea of pain, not to pass the idea of pain, not to sacrifice the idea of pain. I am here to understand that the idea of pain is no more real than anything else in this world. I am here to move past the idea of this world and all that it encompasses the pain, the suffering, the happiness, the great food, the trips, the, the journeys, the, you know, everything, everything that I'm experiencing here, I am here to understand that none of that has anything to do with God's will. Mm -hmm. And as much as I would love to go see the most beautiful sights in this world, none of that is 
the truth of what I will experience when I am have truly bought into God's will. So I, I mean I've heard I've heard the the term pain is exquisite. Um, some people find an incredible amount of satisfaction in the idea of pain. Uh, I don't know if I, I told this story, but many, many, many years ago, I needed a root canal. And for some reason, I to this day, I do not know why, I said I don't want any, any pain medication. No Novocaine, nothing. Just mm -hmm. go ahead and drill. And obviously the, 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 not the, I don't know what the name of the dentist is, but you know, the guy who does the root canal, um, he was a little taken aback by that, but I said, no, no, go ahead and do it. And I did the entire root canal in two visits, by the way, with no pain medication whatsoever. And it was exquisite. I actually enjoyed it. And I have no idea what the, what, the, what that was about. To this day, I have no idea. All I know is that when it was finished, I was happy with it that it was finished. I had my root canal done. Um, everything, everything was copacetic. And I went on to the next thing in my life. But to the, I don't understand. I know everyone's going, I can see everyone. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> I, and to, and now, I don't regret that, but I do know that it gave me a whole new idea of what pain is in reality, because I was able to move just, I was able to move past it. Now, this is years and years and years before coming into contact with, of course, of course, in miracles and, 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 and anything else in that in that spiritual nature. Um, although it, I must say it was a very spiritual experience. And I can look back on that. I can say, OK, I gave up the idea of pain as something I needed. I could move past that point. I could seek. And although I was seeking and not finding a solution to it because I still had the root canal. I was not seeking to find a truth in it. I was seeking to find a way around the illusion of that. I think I'm complete on that. I, I'm not sure, but I think that's the end of the story for me. Baraka, I you triggered a memory for me. I. Uh, my husband and I tried for seven years to have a child. We ended up going through in vitro twice. I did finally, you know, have success uh, becoming pregnant. And so I knew pretty well that this would probably be the only time I would ever have a chance to experience childbirth. And um, I decided no pain medication for me, no episiotomy for me. I'll just do it the natural way. And I did. And it was... <coughs> excruciatingly painful but i i was like you i was glad i i'm glad i did it i experienced it i i know what it feels like without any kind of pain medication and mm -hmm. i popped out a beautiful baby <laughs> <laughs> the idea of a sidestepping pain or defeating pain or, or getting around the idea of pain, all of those are still ideas of the body. Mm -hmm. They still are. Um, they, they drive it. Mm -hmm. The idea of that root canal story drives my ego to this day. I, I showed it. I, I showed her who's boss. No, I didn't. I showed it what it's like not to be the boss. And now that I look back on it, I can see possibly where I was trying to go with that. Um, but I, it, it, it didn't, it, to this day, it doesn't make any sense to me why that happened. Although the only thing I can make sense of 
is that I can say that at a certain point I was able to not value the pain. And that's all. I don't I don't know. I can't I can't say it was good or bad, right or wrong, up or down. All I know is that I I I proved that there is an idea of that. Hi, Gail. Back then. Um, Welcome, Gail. Hi, I'm back. Um, I'm in the gymnasium now, so I'm taking a little break. Okay. I was hopefully going to be able to attend a little bit more, but it's not going to work, so I'll have to listen later, but... Um, I just wanted to say hi. <laughs> yeah, well, it's been quite profound, actually. <laughs> Does anybody else have any have any thoughts about seek but do not find? It's a pretty pretty standardized way of putting things. Okay, let's go on with uh, paragraph number six. Any ideas? Uh, anyone volunteering? I've heard the phrase "no seeky, no findy." <laughs> and so if, if we're not if we're not seeking we're never going to find the truth and i think that we are here because we we are on that search and uh, it's it's happening for us so seek but do not find is i yes, the idea yes. of it the the uh the world's stern decree means that Go ahead and seek, but make sure you don't find. Okay, okay. Make sure you do not find, because if you find, well, gig's up. Okay. <laughs> Game's over. Okay? okay. All right, paragraph number six. Anybody? Barack, uh, this is Dia. Yes, Dia. I just want to say thank you. Thank you to everybody. Has, you have spoken my heart and mind. Uh, and um, I also want to say, is, is seek and ye shall find out, out of the um, uh, Bible? Is that another misstated uh, then in, in what, what they did with the Bible in uh, 325 DC, B, um, BC, uh, AD, you know, with the, uh, with the Nicene Code and the, the constant, um, the emperor. Who's our Bible expert? Well, yeah, yeah. So, uh, who's your Bible? Why does it does? What is it? Why does it? Why is it commonly taught that it says, yeah. "Seek and you shall find." See, well, that's that's if you want if what you're seeking is in this world in this illusion, then you have a pretty good chance of finding it. But what we are saying, in, what the course is saying, what what our brother Jesus is saying here is. What, if what you're seeking is in this world, you're not going, and what you're seeking is the truth, you're not going to find it here. Okay, this so. World, go ahead. I'm listening. No, no, I, I go ahead. Um, you were saying. Um, so what is called the Bible or what was uh, collected as the Bible, um, the Western, you know, you know, we all know what we're talking about. Uh, mm -hmm. that is for a certain level of um, comprehension or for existence of, of knowing that now many people uh, are, are beyond so that the Course in Miracles uh, is... <clears throat> what speaks to an elevation or a more ascended or higher frequency um, mind uh, soul speaking to the higher frequencies of the soul is that is that what it's all about is that what is um, studied so much by still the greatest percentage of, of people who are a part of of the the um the whole christian um, oh is that is that what 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 you feel the course is and beyond it's speaking to 
the next level, or the, I know there are no levels, but frequency of um, of you know of our existence, the up leveling of the human um, species, which we're doing. Well, I, uh, watch out for level confusion. Because yeah, yeah, I know. I, because I that's why I corrected myself. I know there are no levels. Yeah. Well, well there are levels in the well, ego's mind. There are there are ways to 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 exist uh, or or to accept the idea of reality on different levels. If we are saying seek and seek and ye shall find, the way that those words were put to civilization was that the if you want if you seek the truth you will find it but in the idea of the court the way the course is expressing it seek but do not find the truth that you are seeking yes, downstairs. in in the uh, in uh -huh. the way of the original meaning of the of the bible is the truth in this world the truth in this illusion, the the truth of death and sickness and joy and money and and heroism and war and all the different dichotomies that there seem to be in this world, all of those things come to a point where if we find the truth of those, we still haven't found the truth of those. So we want to so seek, but do not find means seek everything of the truth in this world, but you will not find the truth of God's will. How's that? Does that, does that make any sense to anyone? Baraka, so the, I mean, you're, you're saying seek like outside of yourself. So the, the truth as I know it is within me. So why seek it? You know, it's already within me. Is that kind of? Yeah, but 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 still, you, I'm I'm still I'm still directed to seek, but now I'm seeking a truth that is not outside of myself. You're absolutely right. Seek, but find, seek and find means to seek the truth of who I truly am, as God created me. What is God's will for me? Perfect happiness. So. To be with God is to be with perfect happiness. To accept the idea of truth or a seeking in this world, it still does not answer who I am as God created me. I am still separate from God in that truth as the world sees it. Anybody else? Thoughts? Let's go on to the next paragraph. We're, we're got a little ways to go still here. So thank you, Baraka, and everybody. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I could read this one. 13, okay, go ahead, Carolyn. Please do. 13, 6? Yes. 7. Oh, I thought we are on 7. Oh, no, 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 we're at 6. Oh, I'm sorry. You may believe this course requires sacrifice of all you really hold dear. In one sense, this is true, for you hold dear the things that crucify God's Son, and it is the course, course's aim to set him free. But do not be mistaken about what sacrifice means. It always means the giving up of what you want. And what, O oh teacher of God, is it that you want? You have been called by God and you have answered. Would you now sacrifice that call? Few have heard it as yet, and they can but turn to you. There is no other hope in all the world that they can trust. There is no other voice in all the world that echoes God's. If you would sacrifice the truth, they stay in hell. If they stay, you will remain with them. This is a hard one. We are being called to be teachers of God. 
-hmm. If we will grab onto that call and use that call and be that call, then we can be the voice that will bring truth to the world. Mm -hmm. If I would sacrifice the truth, then the world stays in hell. And if it stays in hell, then I remain with it. Mm -hmm. Anything, Mary? I, no, I get it. You know, I'm, I think that's exactly right. Okay. Carolyn, how about you? How, how does that speak to you? Tell me, talk to me. Uh, can you go back to that page oh, sure. for a minute? Yes, absolutely. I'm uh, oh gosh. I guess the first two lines was a little just confusing because it says if I believe the course requires sacrifice of all I hold dear. And in one sense, it's true if I hold dear that the things that crucify God's son. And it is this course's aim to set him free. I guess I'm still wrestling with it a bit. Um, like it says, it, it, do not be mistaken about what sacrifice means. It means giving up what you want. Well, if I want to believe in God's son, free God's son from crucifixion. That seems a little con compromise there, or conflict there. Well, let me, let me ask you this. Is it possible to crucify God's son truly in truth? No. Okay. So if the, if the Course's aim is to set him free from crucifixion, then we are trying to provide something that is not in truth. We are still holding on to the thought the ego mind has of death and pain and suffering. So the and truth guilt. is there's no, no crucifying God, it's it, he's he is, he's free, whatever. And exactly. It's, pardon, All right? And and if and so, if our we job is that, if we believe that he's free and cannot be crucified, and we need to teach other people that, is that yes, what it, okay, that sounds good. That's a, that's a, that's a good start, anyway. Few have heard it as yet, but they can turn to you. So by speaking the idea of truth and by being the truth in this world and shining the truth in this world without fear and without any kind of idea that there's something wrong with that or sacrificing that, if I just go out into this world and shine the idea that there is nothing to sacrifice, that there's no need to sacrifice, that nothing needs to happen here in this world to make God's son, God's son. So those pink lines about don't make a mistake about what sacrifice it means. It always means giving up what you want. Mm -hmm. Then what? So, so if, the, if, if I still have the idea that I must sacrifice something, that means that there's something for me to give up. Okay. And what do I want? Well, what so is I it? want nothing. I want to follow God's direction. We have been called by God and you have answered. We have called by God and you have answered. So being called by God is being called to follow his direction. What we're doing right now, Listen. right here, right okay, now. That, that's helpful. No Thank past, you. no future, just right here, right now. Sometimes I think too hard. 
We're, Stop we're that. You'll you. just hurt you'll just hurt yourself. <laughs> you are not alone, Carolyn. You are not alone. That's that's for sure. That's Thank for you. sure. That's Thank also you. why we are all here. All right. Um boy, the, we, this is I, I knew this was going to be a long one, but let's let's go let's see if we can carry on here. Um paragraph number seven. Who wants to read? I can read. <clears throat> Go ahead, Danny. Do not forget that sacrifice is total. There are no half sacrifices. You cannot give up heaven partially. You cannot be a little bit in hell. The word of God has no exception. It is this that makes it holy and beyond the world. It is holiness that points to God. It is its holiness that makes you safe. It is denied if you attack any brother for anything, for it is here the split with God occurs, a split that is impossible, a split that cannot happen, yet a split in which you surely will believe because you have set up a situation that is impossible. And in this situation, the impossible can seem to happen. It seems to happen at the sacrifice quotes of truth. And we are always praying. <laughs> the altar saying, Reach a higher consciousness. Thank you, Judy. <laughs> I didn't realize I was muted. <laughs> Teacher of God, do not forget the meaning of sacrifice and remember what each decision you make must mean in terms of cost. Decide for God and everything is given you at no cost at all. Decide against him, and you choose nothing at the expense of the awareness of everything. What would you teach? Remember only what you would learn. For it is here that your concern should be. Atonement is for you. Your learning claims it, and your learning gives it. Your learning claims it, and your learning gives it. The world contains it not, but learn this course and it is yours. God holds out his word to you, for he has need of teachers. What other way is there to save his son? We are the saviors of the world. That is what a teacher of God is. I am here to save the world. Not to rearrange deck chairs on a sinking ship. I am here to save the world. And the only way to save it is to teach what I want to learn. And the question is, what do you want to learn? That's what we I, all decide. Right. But I don't I don't think I don't think that my mind could answer that question properly. However, there is a voice for God that can answer that. And all I have to do is just turn that question over to Holy Spirit and say, Holy Spirit, show me what it is I want to learn to be the best son of God I can be. Anyone else? Anyone else at all, please? Well, what I tell myself is I want to learn the truth, be the truth, express the truth. Um, but at the same time, I don't really know what the truth is. <laughs> That's why we have Holy Spirit. 
just constantly turning it over to the say, okay, Holy Spirit, I don't, I don't understand this. I don't know what this is. Mm -hmm. Please teach me. Let me hear the voice for God. The still small voice. Well, here in the Bay Area, we are celebrating diversity. Mm -hmm. And rainbows of light, healing, healing light. This is what the essence of life is about. I think. <coughs> I, I think I think it's all about the light. Shine, 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 shine. Shine, untangle, detangle, let it F and go. As you say, Baraka, just an illusion. Doesn't matter if it's yellow, red, green. God help us. God help us and thank you for your dream my darling that we have our storefront together that we can gather and danny and all of us together and linda and carol and, oh my god you mean so much to me in our journey and it is um mix of <sighs> metaphors but i release to the lord and love amen 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 In so let me see here next week oh how will the world end let's let's not contemplate that right now let's just know that That's that is scary. That's what it's not. It's not scary at all, as a matter of fact. Oh, all right. Okay. I okay, promise. Thank you. All right, dear ones. Thank you all That's very good. much. Thank you. And I'll have this recording out thank as you. soon as it's uh, as soon as Zoom is done do doing with it. And please, and when you uh, receive the recording and the email for this, please think of one person that you would want to give this to you would want to send this to and let them know that by joining us we are increased in that manner of how the truth will come to us so next week it's july the first Un oh my goodness how is that possible <laughs> what an interesting date to have this title Oh, Canada, glorious and free. Have a good week, everyone. Thank you all very much. Hey, Thank you so much. Love you. you all. Blessings, you all. everyone. Thank you Bye, so Terry. much. I'll meet you my core. Thank you, Baraka. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Thank you for your patience. Bye. Thank you. Thank all. you very much. Thank you for teaching us, Carolyn. Thank mm -hmm. you. Thanks all. It was fun today. I, I love, love you. you all. Bye. Bye. I love you too. Cruise on.